Here's a toast to freedom. Here's a toast to filthy Frank. He used to say the N-word. Now they're trying to cancel us. Here's a toast to all of us. We're all wearing masks now. But I ask myself sometimes, was I always wearing a mask? I probably was. You know how it goes. You know how these things are. Please rewind this cassette. I'm going to move this mic a little bit closer. So today we're going to be talking about Lynn manuel Miranda, the tongue-twisty name. Um, film adaptation, even though it's not really a film adaptation. It's a film version of his hit Broadway musical, Hamilton. Obviously about the founding father, Alexander Hamilton, and his rise and fall and prominence. And maybe... And prominence throughout history. I think that's an important element of the show. So let me give you a little background. I am a big theater snob. Um, something that's often ignored on this channel because I emphasize movies. Uh, but honestly, I love uh, musicals. I love stage productions. I, I like all sorts of theater. Um, it's been a big part of my life. I never really got around to seeing Hamilton because every time it came, um, came anywhere, it was like $500, $600 for tickets. So, I don't know if you guys think I'm rich, but I'm not. Uh, so, I was always waiting for it to, you know, kind of get knocked down a little bit before I finally saw it. I had listened to the soundtrack several times. I would read it. I did, however, see In the Heights, which is the play that Miranda did before this with the same director. I believe his name is, like, Tony Kale, something like that. Um, I did see that, and I got to say, that was pretty disappointing. Uh, it, it was good in parts. And I do think something was lost. See, the problem with um, Miranda plays is they're very hard to perform. So if you don't see people who worked on the original production, uh, you really lose something because there's so many words, there's so many verses, and there's so much things going on with the dancing and the dialogue and then with the, the, the rap verses and then singing and performing. It's really difficult. I mean, I couldn't imagine being in one of these plays. So when I saw In the Heights, it was in Pittsburgh, and it just was not a good production. None of the actors could really meet the material. Maybe two or three could. Plus, the book for the show was just kind of shit. It was this basic sentimental crap, you know, hopes and dreams and everyone has to sacrifice. Shares a lot of elements with Hamilton, though. It is an immigrant story. It's about immigrants living here trying to follow the American dream and when an older woman finds a lottery ticket well not finds it but she has a lottery ticket and she wins millions of dollars that changes everything for everyone in the street corner and it's about you know immigrant parents trying to make a better life for their children the the main character Yus Navi um, he owns a shop with his cousin his parents died when he was young so the thing within the Heights is that for about the first 30 minutes it has quite a bit of energy it's a lot of fun the sets are really nice the songs are really unique and, and entertaining. And then in the middle, it just takes this like huge dip. And then it kind of comes back with this emotional element in the, in the last 30 minutes, which really saves the whole play. And it's funny because Hamilton does a lot of the same things, which is what really surprised me about this, was how much it was like in the Heights. Like it, it starts off the first act, has a bunch of energy. You know, it's almost exhausting watching this. Um, I was praying for an intermission because you have to you have to listen to so much you know these words are coming out fast and you have to pay attention because there's character development and plot elements being revealed in these exchanges so it's not something where it's like oh you you just can't handle the the, the hip-hop i can handle the hip-hop but you you know you miss things if, if, you, if you don't catch something you're going to miss an important piece of the story so for the first hour is pretty much loving this i thought it was great totally met the hype i mean really like um, I don't know if Miranda really has the commanding presence to be Alexander Hamilton. It's odd that I actually think he's miscast himself in that role. But one of the pleasures of this is the supporting cast is so fleshed out um, that they really kind of take over. You know, the the sisters and Aaron Burr and George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Lafayette. and So, so really, I, that's my biggest praise of this is a few things. The... 
the rotating set, which I would have liked to have seen live, the rotating set element, how they use space is very clever. The costumes, the, I don't know, the sound mixing of the production, especially on songs like Satisfied, which is like a highlight for me. The duels, whenever there's a duel in this, it's badass because the stage is moving around, so you're getting, they're just shifting perspectives and stuff like that. It's very clever. Um, the dance choreography is a lot of fun. With the camera, you're able to see the close-ups of the actors' faces, which is really nice. I wish they had done more with the camera. There's sometimes where they do a shot from behind the stage or an overhead shot, and it's like, can there be more of this? For the most part, it's a pretty intimate experience, but I would have liked a little bit more dynamic camera work. Um, I know they shot it like three different times to, to put it together like this, but I, I, I don't think they quite captured this in the way that like Stop Making Sense makes you feel like you're at a Talking Heads concert. I never really felt like I was at a show. I was just entertained by watching the show. Uh, King George, fantastic. Really, really fucking funny. Uh, you see the, the drool coming out of the guy's mouth. It's fantastic. So, like I said, for the first hour, I was like, wow, this is awesome. I totally get the hype. This is way better than In the Heights. Um, the acting is great. The the writing is pretty great. There's actually a plot to this, which most musicals are lackluster in that area. They don't have very good plots. On the other hand, this is filled with plot and politics and historical references. And even the dual thing, it sort of reminded me of uh, Barry Lyndon. Um, the Stanley Kubrick movie where a duel plays a prominent role early on and later on. This does something similar. I think there's three duels in this movie and they all play important roles. Not in this movie. I guess this is a movie because it was filmed and it's online. But there's three duels in this that are really important. And it did give me that feeling of Barry Lyndon. Like, oh shit, I guess you started here and then the character ends up here. And they also cleverly do something with Alexander Hamilton talks about how he's, you know, He's not going to give up his shot. He's not going to give away his shot. And the shot glasses at the beginning when they're at a bar. And then they do something with that at the end with a gun. Which is incredibly clever and emotional. So, was digging it. Do not like the middle part of this. I gotta say, I know everyone's like, this is a masterpiece. The three hours just fly by. I thought the middle stretch that focused on George Washington, um, I thought that was just dull as shit. I really did. I thought, I mean... I really liked the, the characters, the actors flipping of different characters. I really liked uh, Thomas Jefferson coming in. I thought that was really fun. I love that actor, David Diggs. Is that his name? The guy from Blind Spotting. I think he was in Wonder. He's fantastic. Um, so for about 30 minutes, I kind of tuned out, which is, this is pretty typical for musicals because actors, they have a lot of energy early on. Then it sort of peters. And then near the end, uh, they get a second wind and then the show picks up momentum again, which Hamilton does. But it, it was so weird how much it was like in the Heights because this is also a story about immigrants and Alexander Hamilton being an immigrant. And there's lines that directly reference this, you know, immigrants getting the job done. So that that is a, you know, this is a reoccurring theme in Miranda's work is, is immigrants coming over to America and succeeding despite the odds being against them. Or what have you. And that may seem like a political statement, um, especially in today's time. People might take it politically. In fact, this has been criticized by uh, left media outlets for not being woke or progressive enough, that Hamilton seems dated now in the current climate of Black Lives Matter and quarantine and everything we're going through. And I actually think there's some justification to that. This does feel like it came out a few years ago. It really doesn't feel like it's of the time. But I don't see why this has to be... Um, more political in that way. I don't think that's Miranda's job. Uh, and they also, I guess, you know, it does kind of, it doesn't focus on the slavery elements of, of the times very well. But, I mean, wouldn't that just be a bummer? I mean, this really isn't a drama in that way. This is more of a, you know, Quint Reviews did a video on it, on the idealism of it. But, you know, I know it's easy to be so cynical and hateful towards America. I know it's so easy to be like, teach your kids to hate America and to hate the founding fathers and everything, you know, el eliminate all context and nuance of history and what other countries in the world did and other civilizations that America's held to this fucking moral standard that nobody could possibly live up to. So we don't celebrate America. So in the third act, when, when Burr becomes more of a villain character, which reminded me of Salieri and Amadeus, you know, he's jealous of somebody who's got natural talents that he doesn't possess, even though he feels like he worked really hard to get these things. 
I thought the play totally picked up again. It gets really emotional. It goes from, you know, of course the revolution part's going to be the most fun. Because, duh. You know, them them planning the revolution and, and following through with it, all that stuff's just so much fun to watch. It's hard to top that. And then, of course, there's the beautiful song, uh, Dear Theodorja, I believe is what it is, I love. But, man, when they bring in Hamilton's son older, when they do the time jump, all that stuff's great. Uh, the final 20 minutes, you know, say this about Miranda. He understands theater. He knows that if you're, if you can't get the audience necessarily on an intellectual level, which I think with the dense politics in this, maybe some people would have a disconnect. You can always get them with the emotional, with the sappiness. That's a way to really hook people. And he does it in the Heights and he does it here. He goes for the heartstrings at the end here. It goes full sappy Broadway musical. It keeps shifting. A lot of the hip hop elements kind of drift away it's less rap verses and becomes more of singing and uh ballads and stuff like that which i think was clever um i think he sets you into something that feels like a reinvention satisfied feels like really sells the premise of what this is and then in the final act he goes back to the classic musical in a lot of ways and it's very inviting and, and you're excited because you had to wait for it and now you're like oh this is this is you know what i'm used to um so i really dug that but the, the thing I took away from this more than anything, after seeing this and in the Heights and with the political climate we're in right now, and I know Miranda said some stuff that I haven't agreed with and other people haven't agreed with, but sometimes I think he he thinks he's great a little bit. I think there's a bit of ego there. I think he has a sense of grandeur. Because think about the success of the guy, like Moana, Hamilton, uh, all of this stuff has come out pretty close together. He went, you know, He went from like a pretty famous guy to overnight being like, super famous like an a-plus lister you know which i'm happy for the guy I, I it's really cool um but i will say this this is what i took from this more than anything and what i think is important about hamilton if you don't like it or not if you don't think it it politically or historically holds up if you don't like the songs what have you I think this is a really pro-America message, and I think In the Heights is a really pro-America message in a time when we don't have pro-American messages. I think Miranda loves America, and that's really – it's a weird that that hit me harder than anything else. He's saying that immigrants – like, don't be scared of immigrants. Be pro-immigrant, right? That's a message. But what he's also saying is that immigrants need to come and be pro-America. That there's, that there's hopes here, that there's, there's jobs here, that there's work here, that you can have a life here, that you can make a new identity for yourself when you come from nothing and become something here, um, which is true. That is true. That's the, 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 the whole thing that has been so ignored during the, the, the current political element we're in right now, what's going on election year, is that, is that you can make something out of yourself. It's not that you're promised that, but that you have the opportunity to. And that we do have a place where African Americans, or, or if, I don't know if you say black or African American now, can be successful and be millionaires and, and basketball and the music industry and the movie industry. And uh, it, then it, it goes across all these different platforms and that we have that diversity in our art and in our workforce, um, even if it's not perfect. The idea of America, what we're striving for in the Constitution, what we're striving for, the idea of America is really beautiful and often bastardized by, I don't know if it's the jealousy of uh, other parts of the world or people that have been manipulated by some sort of uh, propaganda in academia or by just negative influences in their life. America is not the worst place, man. I'm not saying it's the best place ever, but it's not the worst place. And it's actually... It's actually great to watch something where a guy is saying that the ideals of America and what America stands for and democracy um, and that history is a living document and we're living in history every moment to moment. Um, I really took that, that very pro-American message and, I, and that really surprised me because I thought there would be more, hey, you know, it's, it's great that we have this diversity in the cast, but we're making a statement with that. But really that just works in a sense to create sort of a universal feeling to this that it is a country of different people and this is more representing of the melting pot of america the pie chart if you will so yeah i basically say first act is like an 8.5 9 out of 10 
the middle part, I give like a seven. I really didn't. I think you could cut that down. The George Washington stuff just didn't work for me, man. Um, uh, and then the third act's like a solid, like, you know, eight. Really solid. So overall, I give this like a 8.5, 9 out of 10. Probably an 8.5. I don't think it's a masterpiece. I don't think it's like a 10. I don't think it's the best play I've seen in the last 20 years. I actually like Book of Mormon quite more than this. Um, I think Book of Mormon has a way deeper philosophical message at the end because it's dealing with basically the meaning of our existence and <laughs> what we're doing here. Um, but still, really good work all around. It's really cool Disney released this. This was going to be in movie theaters. I don't know how this would have played in theaters. I just, you know, I've watched a lot of Broadway plays uh, being filmed, and you just, the only way it's ever really worked for me, I could see, is if you really hired a, a filmmaker who really could come in and do something with it but typically they don't get like a martin scorsese to do these but i think i think with this where they screwed up is they should have hired more of a, a filmmaker to come in and give it some cinematic panache but there probably eventually will be a movie of this anyway but i hope this encourages other broadway plays that have already made their money their hundreds of millions of dollars to just release the damn thing online like, I get if you don't want to do that when it's new so people can go see it in theaters, but, like, this, I think this has made $600 million. Just re just release a video of it on the line. You know, people, it's on a streaming service. You got paid for it um, so people can watch it who can't afford to go to the theater. And another thing from this, in, in this year where we're not able to go to concerts, there isn't, there isn't Broadway musicals touring right now. You can't go out and, and do those things that are very much, I think, the distractions that keep us connected as a society it was really nice to see you can't go to the movie theater it was really nice to see something to remind people of the value of these things and why we need them and why we watch them and how much we're i felt like i'm missing them i would have rather been in a theater watching this so it's sort of a bittersweet thing but it was also important to have that so people could be reminded that like hey we need these things so we got to try and get this back however we're going to work through this pandemic um so yeah i really i really liked it uh i thought the supporting cast stole the show my favorite songs would be like satisfied dear theodorgia if i'm saying that wrong i'm sorry i just off the top i'm going off memory here um i like the you know let's raise a glass for freedom i like all that stuff i pretty much like all the songs um, the duels are a highlight. The duel sections are just, I think, a highlight of the whole thing. And uh, just, to, just to mix hip-hop with history and uh, the unique production of this whole thing and how it's put together and how it's staged and directed, uh, just really good theater. It definitely comes from a guy, you know, he was, I think, in his mid-30s when he finally got this going. So he worked on it a long time, and it shows. It shows that he worked on it a long time. So if you haven't seen Hamilton and you think you may not dig it, I would recommend watching it. And the cool thing is if you want to watch half of it, you can pause it and come watch the second half later. The intermission on this is only a minute, but you could actually, you know, you can watch it in parts, which I think is fine because you're not setting the, you know, a lot of times when you're seeing something live, you're, you're, it's a respect thing. You're having a connection with the audience and the cast and everything's happening in the moment. That's the beauty of theater, that lighting creates this, uh, manipulation of one's senses and sense of space and all that but you're watching it at home you don't know you don't know them that you can pause it and then watch it later i wish i had done that um honestly i think i would have enjoyed it more had i taken a little bit of a break but i kind of just sat and grinded out the whole three hours which i would not recommend uh but yeah if you're wondering what i think of hamilton uh i've watched a lot of stuff on disney plus i've been doing exploring disney plus as a series on here not frequently um, I had a lot of hype for Disney Plus when it first launched, and then I got really burned out on it, and I think a lot of people did. But if they do more stuff like this, like event streaming things that they can buy, which is what Disney does, it's like, why create our own content? Let's just buy something. Uh, which is, the, But if they could do more stuff like this, buy something you can build hype around that people want to see and upload it like this, it's a pretty good move on the platform. I think do more of this. This can separate Disney Plus from Netflix or from HBO Max or what have you, is getting these really exclusive, amazing things like this. Because this is something that I really like that, you know, I could put it on in the background or I could show it to somebody and stuff like that. And also just gives people opportunity to, to talk about something more and it kind of separates that whole 
classism element that comes with theater the the people who get to frequently go see plays and the people who don't or, or have to settle for a terrible local production or a college production that can't afford the sets and the lighting of a, of a Broadway show. So yeah, I'd never seen it. I knew the music already going in. I knew the story. So I was pretty familiar with it. Um, I'd seen parts of it done before, but uh, I'd never seen the whole thing. It's definitely better than In the Heights. That's the greatest thing I'd say is that he improved from In the Heights. It's like he took everything from In the Heights, and I don't think he wrote the book to In the Heights, and then he just improved on it. Um, and frankly, it's just more ambitious. This is a pretty ambitious piece of theater. And it's it's nice to have art like this uh, right now. And I'm hoping that um, we can get some more stuff. Hopefully we get some some movies. You know, I, I think that Palm Springs movie is coming out uh, on, on Hulu and tomorrow. So maybe I'll watch that. Uh, but thank you guys. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this review analysis, whatever the hell it was, of Hamilton. Because then everyone's talking about it and I wanted to throw my two cents in. Thank you.